This cow genuinely has got an incredibly sore front right foot and it's not hard to see why. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, grabbing the grinder here really speeds me up. I could do this with a knife, but using the grinder is so much more time efficient that it just makes sense to. Again, slightly unusually, we're actually reducing the heels on this cow's foot because the foot angle is way off. Because she's been walking on her toes, avoiding this painful heel, which means she's worn down her toes and her heels are excessively high. Right. You can obviously see in here all this blackened poop, which is always a sign that there's something going on. You can see there's layer upon layer here, like an onion peeling apart as well. There's the first layer. Gee, this absolutely stinks. It really, really smells bad. I'm saying that, I hope she can't hear. I'm saying it smells bad. I have to put up with the smell for a couple of minutes. She has to put up with the pain of this. But hour after hour as she's walking on it. You could see actually before I trimmed her foot, it wasn't particularly overgrown. These cows do have really well looked after feet, but things go wrong. Just like some of you are watching. <laughs> Just like some of you are watching right now with a sore arm or I've got sore heels actually. Accidents happen. This is where the cows live. There are a few hundred of them here and things are bound to go wrong. So we're just working our way up the hill here. I know there's going to be another layer here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about this part here, actually. This might just fade away to nothing or there might be something underneath. My thoughts are it will probably fade mm -hmm. away to nothing, which it has. And as we work mm -hmm. up here, this is where the problem is all coming from. The root cause. This is zone three on a cow's foot. I can see in behind it this a build up of fluid. And that fluid will be acting like a piece of oh, a piece of gravel in her shoe. Every time she steps, that pressure will be coming up through her foot. Like if you actually can actually see it moving around in behind that hoof horn. Swap knives so that we can swipe up the way hopefully avoid cutting into anything that we don't want to be touching. These slithers of hoof horn that I'm removing aren't a millimetre thick. They're not half a millimetre thick. They are absolutely tiny, apart from that one, obviously. Just completely disprove your point there, Graham. But in general, they're mm. tiny. We're taking minuscule pieces of hoof horn away from these cow's feet. But things can still go wrong, even at those tolerances. Look, if I get my finger here, we can see it in here. It's completely pulling away from underneath. Parts of it are still attached, and using my finger here is quite good because, it, ah, ah, you're okay, you're okay. It's obviously uncomfortable for her, but it means I can peel this part back so that I'm not cutting into anything that I don't want to. Ah, God. Poor thing. Just need to get this away. You just never know how far up behind this wall horn that these problems go. Sometimes they can be really far reaching and sometimes they can literally end just as you think they're beginning. Which is why mistakes can happen. Okay, we're doing fairly well here, but there is definitely still some detached hoof horn. You can see it down here. Every time I move my knife, you can actually see it slightly through it. It's literally open flesh and tissue. Dermatitis is just a horrendous, horrendous thing. It's so hard to get rid of and such a painful thing for the cows. This has actually turned out really, really, really well. I've got high hopes for this, right? She does need a block and she does need a bandage. Look at that, it has trimmed out well. I am actually happy with that. She won't be though. Right, we'll just bandage it and let her go.